part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Welcome back, everybody, to Podcast 616, the official podcast of Earth 616. I am your host, Damon Royster. It's it's marvelous that you came back. Is that a pun? Didn't mean it, but it is. Uh, Podcast 616, this is the podcast where I gather writers, actors, improvisers, and genuinely funny and thoughtful people to get together and recap MCU films to prepare you for the next Marvel movie that is coming out. As it stands right now, we are in uh, anticipation, waiting for the next Marvel movie, which will be Doctor Strange. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So to help get us started with, uh, to get ready for that movie, we are talking about uh, the 2021 film Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings, a.k.a. the one with that sick-ass red bomber jacket that I really, really want. Uh, Truly, if anyone knows where you can get me a red bomber jacket, I I know I will look good. Um, To help me get through all 10 of these rings, I have brought together the best expert and the best newbie uh, I could possibly find on this specific date and time. Now, uh, in our newbie seat, first up, uh, truly, fun fact, I thought this person's last name was Scott's, uh, but I really recently found out in January of 2022 that it's not. So please, our resident newbie for today, please welcome to the mic, Mo Phillips Spots. I've known you for like nine years. I know. And you don't know my last name. Imagine how I, I felt. I don't know. I don't know that I'm a newbie. I'm like an in between B. I'm not an expert, but I know some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I don't like the term mm. newbie. It's, oh, uh, I, yeah. I want to go into that. A lot of people are very hesitant to say they're new. <laughs> I don't think that I. Well, we'll get into. I'm not an expert, but I don't think I'm new either. But yeah, we'll we'll get into it. I guess. We're, it's your podcast. I'm just living. Thank in you, it. thank you. And that's Mo uh, in our expert seat. Um, the the king of kings, um, Brooklyn resident. I gather from the hat that he's wearing right now for this recording. Um, oh my gosh, nervous. Did not uh, ask how to pronounce the last name, so I'm going to take my best shot. In our expert today, we have La Torello. That's exactly right. Yeah, the two L's are not the Spanish version, which I get a lot in Chicago, where I do live. Torellos. Though I am from Brooklyn. And that's what the hat is referring to. <laughs> I have to wear this hat just so people know my opinion of pizza around Chicago. Mm. So I have to wear I have to wear hats that make sure they know I don't like their pizza. Yes. And this is what this hat does for you me. You like your pizza thin and wide. Yeah, I like that. Like I like my co-hosts. <laughs> what are we doing? How does that thin and wide? I- it's like a trick. You know, you look at it from one angle and it looks like one thing, then you turn it the other way and it looks like something else. Oh no, that's me. Mm. Uh, yeah. But I'm not. Yeah. Well, we, me. we talked to Mo about her feelings about the new, her newbie status. Law, why did you feel that you were the expert? That you were on an expert level? I'm a comic book nerd, so I I have read a lot of that stuff. But as far as the movie things go, I, I have a ten year old son, and uh, so we try to keep up with those with the with the Marvel Cinematic Universe as it's released. But my son's, uh, but as a as a dad of a kid that age, I have to watch movies before he watches them, or I feel that I should. Um, my mother never did that, for instance, or in the complete inverse of that. When I was my son's age, I came home from school to find a, a blank looking VHS that said, watch this before nine o'clock tonight, we have to return it. And then I popped it in right after school and it was The Exorcist. Um, no. And I watched it and I watched it by myself and I was terrified. Uh, so unlike my mother's, uh, you know, decision to, to how to raise a child, I pre-watch movies before my son watches them. So I had seen uh, Shang-Chi <laughs> before we even saw it together. And then multiple times, of course, since thanks to Disney Plus, are we allowed to plug Disney Plus on the podcast? I mean, the, the whole point of the Yeah. I mean, why not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I love that. I'm, I'm able to just jump on there. And uh, we're also big fans of the sh- the soundtrack. Oh, my God. Uh, these movies and the soundtrack was awesome. This sound, man, the soundtrack, the song that plays when he's on the bus. Man, that's my theme song. Yeah, it's DJ mm-hmm. Snake. It's Run It. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it. yeah. It, it's just the no, no, no lyrics in that one. I was, I was kind of curious as to what that was. Up. So I guess between my love for the music, my love for the comic books, and my over parenting or helicopter parenting, whatever I'm doing to my poor child, so that I watch movies before he watches them, I felt like I could uh, expert level up this movie. 
I love it. I love it. Well, thank you both for being here. Um, so, so much. Uh, so yeah, so Shang-Chi, like, again, this is like, we're, we're watching all the movies that should help us under, better understand uh, the next Doctor Strange movie. And I, I selected this one just because Wong's in it for literally just two sings, scenes. Um, but I don't think it has too much Doctor Strange uh, connection beyond that. So uh, I'm down to just, let's just pick apart uh, a truly great movie. I, I adore this. Uh, Mo, Mo Phillips Spots. Um, mm-hmm. Was this movie spot on for you? I hate you so much right mm, now. Yes. Um, <laughs> So much. Uh, no, I, I have so, I have so bad. Can I go? No, Can you I, have no? to say an okay. opinion. Okay. Uh, no, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, I watched it fairly recently because I, I was see with a friend and we could never get our stuff together. And by we, I mean me, I could never get my life together to watch it, but I finally sat down and watched it and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I know we're going to get into it later, but I'm a sucker for good fight choreo. Oh, and this movie checked so many boxes. Mm. I just, uh, that, uh, it's so good. Yes. So oh. good. It truly like, uh, and I feel like every fight scene, they do a really good job of like, it tells a story in addition to just mm-hmm. being a fight scene, mm-hmm. but we're, we're, we're going to get into the fights. We're going to get into the fights at the end. Um, going over to law. Uh, how was Shang-Chi for you? Uh, I had a great time. Uh, when I, I like I said, the weird part is I saw it by myself uh, in theaters and uh, I had a very similar experience with this that I did uh, in Chicago uh, when I saw Black Panther by myself, which was I was in a theater in Chicago surrounded by predominantly people who were not white. And that was an awesome feeling. Uh, I could just see little kids seeing themselves in this movie that there was. I mean, it was awesome. It was it was literally like an Asian day camp came the, the day that I went to go see it. And with all these little East Asian kids just losing their minds and playing the movie while the movie was happening. And like I said, same thing. I went to go see Black Panther by myself before you know, so I could bring my son to see it. And same thing, just to see little kids seeing themselves in that movie. So that was huge for me, man, because I've always been that guy that I'm. I'm as a white dude, man, I always see myself in movies as a, as a little kid growing up. I could go see a movie and, and feel like I was in it. Yeah. And that has not been the case for the majority of, of Americans for a very long time. And to see that happening on the faces of those kids was awesome. And I say, like I said, I kind of I see things through that that lens of being a, a dad, you know. And so the idea that that kids could enjoy it on that level, just oh, I loved it. Yeah, truly. Like, uh, thank you for saying that. Um, yeah. Like, this is a huge historic movie. Like, this is the first uh do I want to say Asian American superhero? Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> literally yeah, ever. I, I think so. Um, yeah, uh, truly, I love this movie as well. It it knocks me. Out. I think I've seen it three times at this point, um, which is low for me. I'll admit, um, but it, it just knocks me out of my seat every time I see it. Um, so, oh my gosh, Simu Liu uh, is an amazing, <laughs> amazing man. Uh, he did a lot of his own stunts, which I find very attractive in a man. Yeah. Oh, same. Oh man. Yep. <laughs> that bus scene. Oh, yes. Das Bus. Yeah. Um, but yeah. But oh, again, but before we uh, get to the bus, beep beep. Uh, what? How did this work for you guys as like an origin story? Because this is our first time meeting Shang Chi, and you know, it it really feels like it's like its own MCU creation because the comics was not it wasn't great. <laughs> oh, the comic the comic books were problematic. Yeah. <laughs> All oh, over I'm, the place. I mean, I bet. When were they written? The 70s. Like in, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. In the 1970s? Not a great time. I get, it was just layering stereotypes. For, <laughs> it, oh, yeah. so shocked. Uh, is is it, is he, is like a superhero called the Ten Rings? Is that what his like name is? No, that's his dad's crime syndicate. Mm. Okay. Well, I was confused because. You know, the last screen of Marvel films, though, is like Black Panther will return or Thor will return. Right. This just said the Ten Rings will return. I'm like, right. so not even Shang-Chi? No, like, that, that might be what they're talking about, because now his. Well, oh, I mean, we, we're 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 way safe for spoilers, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> I mean, it's been out please. for, yeah, six months. So at since least, his so. sister is running the Ten Rings at the end. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. They will, okay. they will right. return. They will return. So the ten rings will return. Oh, I, mm, okay, so it's a keeper. I, okay. Yeah, I, I took it more literally, like the actual ring ringlets, the little bracelets. Um, mm-hmm. I thought they would return. 
Yeah. Right. But why not him and not the, but that was my yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he seems pretty attached to them. He does for now. <laughs> for now. <laughs> I don't want to ruin anything for anybody, but those things change hands a lot. <laughs> oh man. Law, don't do this to me. I need, I need to see you in my life. Uh, oh, you will. I mean, but the, but those, but those little, they're, they're very persnickety. Those rings who they decide to, that they kind of have an energy of their own oh. and, they kind of choose, you know, what they're doing. And there's some, there's some energy that way too. in, in the, in the lore of the 10 rings. Yeah. Let's stay on the 10 rings then and go to the, well, we'll just bounce around the movie. Like at the, that, the first secret scene, the post credit scene with um, uh, Bruce Banner and Carol Danvers doing literally what she always does leave. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to connect with you, Miss uh, Captain Marvel. Can you stay? For like, and it looks like that's what she's gonna be doing. She has shit to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, nope, like, no, go. you can't get to know me. Goodbye. Uh, they kind of see. So in my mind, let's just geek out about this. I thought because this came out the same year as the movie Eternals, I was thinking that the Ten Rings were some kind of eternal connection. But then, famously, I saw the Eternals, and it was uh, bad uh, for me, and no mention of the rings <laughs> for a lot of people. <laughs> A lot of people. So do, it, it took me three watchings to watch it. You know how you said you've seen Shang Chi three times. Now yeah. I had to sit down three separate times to get through the Eternals. So it was like, just let's pause now and take a break. That that, but, that episode's coming. But just do we think that there is a uh, eternal Ten Ring connection? Given that uh, his father, the Mandarin, uh, is immortal or was immortal, and so. In the very least, I'll say what I'm excited about is that I think this is an example of the Marvel Cinematic Universe doing what they want with it. They're not going to worry about the source material. They're going to say, what are we going to do? Because they saw the similarities between the rings and the power stones. uh, And they have even more similarities in the comic books. So they were like, we need to really push away from those similarities. So I'm excited about what the, what the movie writers are deciding to do with this. Cause they've done great things so far that weren't from the comic books. And I think this is going to be an example of that. Nice. Nice. Um, speaking of things that aren't in the comic books, how about, uh, Aquafina? Uh, she's a, <laughs> I don't know this. It's always so weird for me when like somebody who I think is genuinely funny is in this, like, very commercial, big budget blockbuster film. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, man, is she, I don't know. Uh, I'll go to Mo. Mo, did, did Aquafina work for you uh, in this film? Uh, she did. Um, I kind of had some feelings about Aquafina uh, going speak into it. it. You're not alone. There's um, lots of people that have lots of feelings about it. Oh my gosh. Apparently yeah. I'm alone. Speak on it, please. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, with the, the talk of like her using a black scent and that whole debate, and I was like ready to like not like her character, and I actually really enjoyed it a lot. There are points, you know, there. This movie followed if you like know superhero tropes. There are like certain things we're always gonna hit, like the first battle with the uh, antagonist, their protagonist gonna lose, then they come back and fight him again, and they win. Um, so when they were, uh, that monster was sucking the soul out of their dragon, mm-hmm. you knew it was going to be Aquafina to hit it. And yet, I was still yelling at my screen for her to hit the dragon <laughs> very loudly. <laughs> if she didn't hit the, I swear, I was like, I swear to God, Aquafina, if you mm-hmm. not hit that dragon in the third, I swear. And I, yeah, and I honestly, and I was so glad that they stayed friends and did not like become lovers. That was like my biggest thing. I was like, please let me just be best friends. I know. Just be friends, please. Uh, so, I will. Yeah. I will echo this through almost. I probably will say this in every Marvel podcast I do. The, the, Marvel's not good at romance, except for Wandavision. But other than that, but even that's so sad. It's torturous. <laughs> yeah, it's tragic romance. Right. Uh, yeah, Marvel. I I can't think of one Marvel couple. I'm like, oh, that was so hot, or like, I'm glad. Oh, I believe that in their brief, love. That brief. That brief for uh, for Natasha and. Uh, and banner you got a little bit of like that's kind of cute yeah. I, I got all that stuff that goes on in my head my my weird nerd head it's like what happens when he hulks out like are they still is that still happening for them is that mm, yeah. you know, like, probably <laughs> like you're dating two people oh yeah and, and one of them is very different than the other 
Oh my yeah. gosh. Uh, yeah, that's what you want, right? That's what you yeah. want. But that, that'll bring the variety. Of the, that, that, you know, that's what, you know, some people try to do. He's spicy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice mug. Um, he, he, walks, he walks in the house and she's just trying to piss him off. And he's like, I see what's happening here. Uh, to, to the dear listeners, I have a Hulk mug um, that I'm referencing uh, since we're talking about uh, Das Bruce. Uh, I don't know why I'm so German today. Um, I think, yeah. So I think that's the closest thing to like some romance that I, that I liked. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I do worry. Cause we end the movie, they walk into little, the Wong portal, Wong's portal and you know, they link arms and I'm like, don't, no, no, <laughs> just stop right no, there. No, I was worried when uh, like they survived the battle and they're hugging, they're going to like lean back and then kiss. I was like, please mm-hmm. don't, don't do that. Don't. And they did. And I was like, oh, but- I, I, I just I, I really like their friendship and like I loved how she was like yeah after that bus attack yeah let's hop on a plane and go visit your sister yeah, I'm like you can tell me yeah. on the plane I'm like, <laughs> like yes let's yeah. go I mean I really do love the fact that they are both uh, essentially comics I mean even though he's got kind of a range in his world he still comes from Kim's convenience for me and, mm-hmm, and I had mm-hmm. some really great laughs in his work on that show he wasn't just a straight man on that show as far as where things came from he really created a, a nuanced character on that show so the fact that these two leads of this superhero movie like come from the world of comedy is so fantastic beautiful oh mm-hmm. yes okay yes and now we're all that dude because so do we um <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're ready. I'm ready to marry Marvel. Well, They're going to need another thing at some point. He's from Brooklyn. We have the same accent. This is how I sound when I wake up. So we're fine. <laughs> I'm ready. That's, that's a, Fantastic. I feel like that's a good question. Would you guys, if you guys got the call, would you do a Marvel movie? Just based on your comedic talent? Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> are you serious? It, yeah. What, what are you we dumb here? No, I'm really holding up for Hamlet. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I do a Marvel movie. What am I saying right now? I just feel the pressure. That's a lot of pressure. You gotta like. I don't yeah. care. It's a paycheck. <laughs> and you know what? Guarantee people are gonna come and watch it. They're gonna come see the yeah. movie, whether it's good or bad. They're gonna show up, and they can judge me after. That's fine. But Mo, like, I think that we. I don't think people. I don't think Aquafina was prepared for the blowback that she got, and she only really got it because of how much exposure you get when you do these movies. Because she yeah, that's she's true. done her own Comedy Central show, her own you know comedy bits and no Ocean one no Day. one said anything about her blacks and then as soon as it comes out that she's doing a marvel movie people started taking exception to it because of that popularity so yeah but i'm black so i wouldn't have that issue and i don't uh yeah but so, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I don't i don't i don't think law is saying the exact same thing that happened to aquafina would happen no to i know i know that's true i mean i guess with any i think any kind of like major motion picture you're going to have people looking at your life even like, you know, people who get an SNL automatically people are like in their business. Mm-hmm. I don't think that like so much so that Marvel some of them get fired is, in 48 hours. Hello. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying so I think any kind of major project, people are going to be looking at your life and trying to find what's wrong with you before you even, you know, get yeah, up to bat. They might do a so, podcast about your Marvel movie a year later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm just saying we, we, I'm just saying I would take a weekend. I would just take a weekend. Yeah. I, I, no i think i would do it i think i would jump in uh i've really enjoyed the way that marvel has approached these movies just because dc is doing a terrible job it's so bad. um and i'm a dc fan like my yeah. we grew up on, on dc in my same house here. um same here oh, you poor children but they're just they're not well my you know uh, you get what you were raised with and my dad love Superman and so it would be uh, and then Batman but I just think they're doing such a great job or for Marvelous. the most part a great job with the stories they're telling Marvelous yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. well wonderful let's get back on uh, a Shang-Chi path um, so talk to me about let's talk about the family um, starting at the top with that mom and dad we can hmm, I did want to save a section for the fights but we all know we all know that how that let's just go into it. The I call it the I called it the flirt fight in all my notes. Um, it was a dance. It was so lyrical and beautiful. Just to uh, so just mm. okay. I'll do I'll do some service journalism to set it up. So uh, the father. Oh my gosh, his name's Wu Wu Win. Oh my gosh, the character. the character. Oh yeah, the character. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the the father is you know goes by the Mandarin. He's this immortal being. No word on how that works. He just lives forever, um, and he gets these ten rings, conquers lands, and he's like, "There's one land I've never uh, conquered, which is a uh, Tao Lao, um, or is it Tao Lo? Ta Lo. Ta Lo. Okay, thank um. you. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, he is going to conquer the land, but they've got one guard, um, the one bad Mama Jamma, who is really good at Tai Chi. And they have this whole fight that is so graceful and beautiful is just winds and leaves and a little waterfall in the background. Uh, Law, how was this fight for you? Well, the, the first part of it that for me, that was uh, where I was, I, I try, it's weird just to, to, you got to blank your brain out and really just let the movie happen. Mm-hmm. But I was, I, because so uh, Shang-Chi's mom is, is narrating it. Right. That's that's the cool. That's the other backdrop of that is that we we know that we're past it, at least. You know, we know that this is nothing bad is going to happen here. True. We have like the safety because we know that this person is speaking on it. That's that we're watching featured in the fight. Mm-hmm. So since that was happening, I did have a couple of moments where I, where I did. I felt like, man, again, it's that dad thing in me where I was like, OK, so wait, this woman who's getting her first introduction to this dude, is he is trying to beat her ass. <laughs> And she's like, yeah. and she's just like, man, he was so cute. <laughs> just like, like she just couldn't get past. Like she's like, man, but he was so handsome and he was. So- but she still yeah. kicked his ass. She didn't let that stop her. She's like, no, I, I think that kick shows how butt. much of a badass she is. She's like, oh, this is cute. This little mortal being thing. He's gonna tangle with me. Good luck. Right. Yeah. It's, it was very cute, but I still had that thing where I wanted women to want better for themselves. <laughs> I wanted her, but man, she couldn't find somebody that was that cool, but also d- d- wasn't inclined to just start smacking her around when he met her for seemingly no reason. Okay. Well, they met on business. <laughs> they, I don't think that's how, I don't think, you read a lot into it. I think of they met I on read business. A lot into yeah. it. I'm a lunatic. She, she was doing her job and he came to fight her and she beat his ass. If in some way you fall in love with a competitor, I don't think there's anything yeah, wrong well, with that. Have you never read Pride and Prejudice? Hello. This is literally Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> Literally, pride and enemy, prejudice. enemies become lovers. It happened. That's it. They, they were enemies who became lovers. Yeah. Uh, and, and and so so I know we're we're still trying to stay. I don't know. I'm I'm not sure if we're trying to stay away from the fight info, but uh, I I'm a fight choreographer. Uh, I utilize one of the things I utilize in that work is something called combat mime. And the biggest difference about combat mime is that you. It, it, versus what happens a lot with stage fighting, especially or film fighting, which is the fights are just gratuitous. And whereas in, the whole idea of pantomime is you're telling a story without words. Mm-hmm. And so when you add combat to pantomime, you're telling that story through the fighting and every single move and block and hit told their romance. Every one of them told how they felt about each other more than any monologue could have, or certainly any other scene where they just happened to, you know, montage fall in love, you know, yeah. since he like, you know, dropped off her car that day for her and <laughs> helped out like, Oh, it was so clean when I picked it up, but you didn't even have to do that. It had a full tank of gas, whatever other crap we watch in movies where people fall in love. And this was like each and every block, each and every swing told something about how they were feeling about each other. And you saw their, you saw them turn as you guys put from enemies to lovers, like in that, in that moment. Yeah. And so I love it. That was, that was part of that fight. Also, Holy guacamole law. You're a fight choreographer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're going to bury the lead uh, today. Um, so let's stay on these fights. Uh, Cause I do, uh, it's interesting to think of like court fight choreography as like pantomime um, as a comedic improviser. I do a little bit of pantomime myself. Uh, That's right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, to speak more about, let's go into the fights now. Um, what, what was this your favorite fight? The little flirt fight at the beginning, or was there another one that really captivated you? Oh man! I mean, the the flirt fight, which is a great way to put it. I mean, to to watch two people who are going to, you know, they they cut right from that to the to her a uh, hold to him holding the baby. Mm. So you've mm. you have Marvel doing the job of a fight, bringing you all the way through the <laughs> the consummation conception of a child. <laughs> like they just they put that fight in 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 lieu of all of the romance that happened afterward, both physical and otherwise. And so it justified all of that. That's what that fight had to do. So I think that was brilliant. Uh, the fight itself, the great thing about being in a film with, of course, budgets like these is that no no expense was spared in making sure that each of them had their own style. Each of them came from a different world of fighting and that those were consistent throughout. It's not just some mishmash of BS. Those fight styles were very specific and they were, oh my goodness. And, that, and then that continues again later when we see his aunt 
uh, teaching uh, Shang-Chi that that same fight style kicks back in and you see his stuff that he has from his uh, his kind of the way his father raised him and then trying to adjust and there's a moment in his training with his aunt later where you literally see the, the style go from one to another inside of his body and so to have to have fight choreographers on hand like that that can really make sure that they can do physical representations of when a style switches from one to another oh that's so great to watch as a as a fight choreographer yeah yeah yeah, love that. And I, like, I, I love that at the end when like Shang-Chi starts to do the same moves that his mom did to the dad. The dad's mm-hmm. like, oh shit, it's just like his mom. Which I want to, mm-hmm. you know, for all you superhero movie writers out there, I know you're listening. Can we get more where like young men learn from their mothers? I'm so, th- this was a revelation for me. I, I was raised by a single mom and it just always irks me when like, you know, Batman or Superman, it's like, oh I really miss my dad. How can I have this relationship with my dad? I sorry, I know there are dads on the call. No offense to dads, but like I've seen it. I get it. And like, you know, as <laughs> as a male who has a strong relationship with his mother, I just want to see more of that because you know, men can learn things from women. It's possible. Um I, I think that might be also, I mean, you know, Disney has always had issues with mothers from from jump. Mm-hmm. So this is us, you know, That's true. trying to work through that yeah. trauma. To get through uh, this. Speaking of uh, trauma, Mo, have you ever been like on a bus writing your term paper and then somebody with a razor blade for a hand slices your computer in half? Mm, twice. Damn, CTA. They don't mess around yeah. in Chicago. It's rough. It's rough. <laughs> um, no, but I, re- I really loved this scene. And I uh, before had seen TikToks. That's right. I'm on TikTok. Uh, some like shots of uh, of them working this fight choreo and I was like oh these are uh, no nobody's doubles here uh, it was it was just very cool and I also love that Aquafina found her way to be in it too by driving the bus that was a really cool like great I'm also going to help I'm, I'm the driver of this I'm going to drive this bus you yeah it was really cool to see them in action and also just like because I went into it blind. Oh, wow. So watch him go from like mild mannered, uh, you know, valet. <laughs> valet driver to superhero. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> and you you had you had uh, Aquafina's experience, which is like, yes, I do. He doesn't know how to like, fight. Who are yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> who is this dude? <laughs> I also had a fun, <laughs> had a fun uh, speed moment in that where I felt like she was Sandra Bullock and he was uh, Keanu Reeves. I was like, oh, this is so great. <laughs> this is that, that's a, the speed remake I would watch. Uh, oh, my yeah. God. Yes, I would Ooh. so watch that speed remake. <laughs> I would watch that. Would, yeah. Real quick before we take a break, who would you want uh, the Dennis Hopper to be in that remake? If it's like Aquafina and Simu Lu, who would be the villain? <laughs> Man. Oh, my goodness. The clock's ticking. Oh wow, yeah, the clock is ticking on this one. Oh my gosh. Um that I uh hold on. Who's uh <laughs> um uh, you know what? All I, I can think is is the green goblet. No, that's all Willem Dafoe. About. Yeah, William Defoe. I was Good. I was gonna say I was gonna say at least culturally in the same spot, even mm. though not the same nationality, and grab that guy who was just in Squid Game. Because I just mm. um, oh. the, the old man so, or the, the main character. I think the main guy because okay. he's like the mm. right age. He's like the he's like just, just retired age, like just retired cop age kind yeah. of thing. I don't know his name, I'll look it up. But I was someone like that, someone who just would surprise you and just like or yeah. the guy who played the the card game, the betting game in the subway, that got him two squid games. The, oh, the slap, the guy that's just slapped The him. slap guy, yeah, the slap guy, yeah, yeah. Uh, or him. Nice. And you know what? Hollywood is listening, uh, I've decided. Um, any fights that have not been mentioned that y'all want to talk about? Oh, let's see. Um, well, it, I, I love the, so in the very least, if we're talking about a little bit like just throwing in uh, how, how these characters use their fight styles and stuff. The fact that you could see Tai Chi in there, mm-hmm. just literally see like 
just the the meditative movements that's that's his pretty much the the scene with his with him and his aunt um that was just amazing and i just love i have kind of lots of memories i grew up in a a pretty big city so i love i have memories of like all these like kind of elderly people doing those moves in the park they would just lead each other and it was like groups like maybe maybe 10 15 people like this is the same way someone might take a group out and do uh yoga or something like that in new york where i live there was a couple of parks where there would be kind of old asian people doing these cool tai chi moves and uh uh, and that's so great because that 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 can be any age. You know, so they even they even threw some fight style in there that it was it was it, beyond representation of culture. You don't have to be a, a young buff star to be doing that stuff to 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 follow through those movements. So I really love that part. Yeah. In fact, the Tai Chi was legit in there. It was like representing. Love it, love it. And then Mo, any final fights? No, I was just thinking about. I mean, fight related. Um, Going back to Aquafina and the the bow and arrow, mm. um, I just I always like as someone who is an uh, artist and is not following a path that is traditional um, by any means, and with who have friends who are like doctors and lawyers, it was really cool to see someone like find their path or find their moment in a movie. I know we don't see it all the time; we see it sometimes, but like just watch your kind of like this is a thing I'm good at. I can do this and I can help in this way. It was really satisfying for me to watch. Hell yeah. Uh, and I'll give it up for the side of the building fight. Truly gave me a, my butt was clenched the whole time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like heights yeah. or sharp, sharp things. I wouldn't make a great uh, superhero. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was beautifully done too. I mean, as far as cinematography goes and how they made, made those pictures move for you so you can keep track. I feel like a lot of movies, have taken you know the opportunity to do things like that and it's all kind of a blur Mm -hmm. and this was crystal clear you could really see again the fights kept telling the story each one of those moments the fights it it didn't just take second you know second stage to something it was awesome oh yeah yeah i love the building stuff too and And i really did think characters were in danger Mm -hmm. i was like "Mm, i'm not sure what's going to happen with this person like they might be gone for a while or something might happen i was even for aquafine i was like this might be how she exits for a little bit yeah so i really (laughs) didn't feel like it was automatic that they were going to be you know totally fine (laughs) The number of times I thought that someone was going to drop off a building or a dragon, I was like, don't let that kid drop. That's it. My character. Well, dear listener, don't you drop out of this conversation. We're going to take a quick break. My transitions are fire, y'all. I don't care what you say. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to go through the whole uh, family dynasty of, I don't know their last name, Shang-Chi's family. Uh, we're going to talk about all of them after this break, so please come right back. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Books like Stephen King's The Shining or Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. If you're on the hunt for book recommendations and enjoy sparkling conversation, come read along with us and then listen in. Hello, this is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of the Producing While Asian podcast. Join us to listen in on conversations with everyone who identify from producers to non-producers who all are part of the AAPI community. There's all that and more on the Producing While Asian podcast here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Hi, my name is Sam Post, owner of Phenomwell CBD Store and PhenomwellCBD.com. That's like phenomenal, phenom, well, cbd.com tune in where we talk with experts about how the amazing hemp plant can make a difference for people's health and well-being from the press play podcast network and we're back oh man hello everybody did you have a good break mo are you okay Uh, Mo is just beside herself as we journey on this uh, conversation of uh, Shang-Chi's family. Let's start with the dad, Daddy Wenwu, um, a.k.a. the Mandarin, a.k.a. the head of the Ting Ten Rings, a.k.a. Uh, Tony Leung, who, my God, like, what a gift. What a gift for us <laughs> to watch his, him do an amazing job as probably one of the better Marvel villains. As a I'm going to say him and uh, Jordan, um, Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Yes. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I think there is something endearing about them. Like, we we them. understood their origin story and why they were doing what they were doing. We're like, I'm like, ah, uh, I can't hate you because you just want your wife back. I get that. Mm-hmm. Yep, I would knock down lots of cave doors if I thought that lady was on the other side. Uh, right now, she's just birthday shopping for me, but if she was somewhere where I had to get to her, I would, I would, I would drive a jeep through the woods. Definitely. That, that's actually my one knock for this movie. How did it work for you guys? That like, I thought this was going to be a martial arts movie, top to bottom. Like, I thought the final fight would be more like you know the final fight in Kill Bill Volume One with the crazy eighty eights, like very raw. Yeah, very raw. Yeah. Thank you, Law. I was not prepared for a mystical quest and like voices of the, the mom from beyond the big dragon yeah. and everything too. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. How did that flip work for you? It was, it was, yeah, I guess I was expecting more along the lines of like a quote unquote traditional Marvel movie. Yeah. Like there was fighting, but this one felt like almost lyrical, just the way it kind of like, you know, wax with like the magical realism. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not magical realism because there were actual dragons. Real but magical. It, just, it felt like in a different, it was just like straight magic. It felt, it, it felt different in a way that was great, but just like it wasn't like a, the same vibe as other movies we've seen before. It wasn't a blue laser shooting up to the sky. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, but close. <laughs> I mean, it was kind of close. close. Yeah. Uh, yes, but uh, okay. So back to the dad. Uh, wonderful. I I love this. I love him. I already said this before, but I just loved his recognizing the mom in that son uh, in that moment at the end, and then he transferred the rings to him. I was like, yes, pass down your problematic lineage. <laughs> <laughs> right, do something. Yeah, is that something right with them? Mm-hmm. Is that what made him immortal? Were these rings, or he just like was just happened to be living for a thousand years? I, Plus, in, in the comic books, that the, the, they're the they're the key to that. Mm. Okay, that's what I assumed. Is like there's like this is why he. I don't think it was super clear in the movie, but I think in the comic books it's clear. Yeah. that's that. <laughs> that's that the holders yeah. of the ten rings are lent that in addition Definitely. to. Uh, but if you remember that, that first question. line from the beginning, the mom the mom character does say. That when he received them, he could have done good with them, but it, yeah. it was his it was his negativity that made them bad. They are not inherently evil. They are right. not you right. know, the rings are not that. Um, so his his right. designs on power that made them kind of uh, do that to him. I did. I did love him. I loved him as a dad too. I was. I. I I loved getting his kids together. It it felt like a funny thing that a dad would do. Like, listen, if I have to kidnap you to just have you at the same table with me, I know you don't like me, but this is what the extent to which he went to get them together. I thought that was great. Yeah. Uh, Okay. (laughs) It was believable. I mean, it was believable to me that he would go to those to go those lengths, and and he even says like, "Hey, those guys could have killed me." He's like, "I knew they couldn't." And you're like, "Yeah." (laughs) <laughs> when a father has that much perception of, of, of his children, it's great. I feel like you got to ask them first and then send off. That's what, that's what a mom would do. But this is not how dads work. I'm just being honest with you. <laughs> I don't. I think my dad would have asked me rather than send assassins. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure my dad would send assassins. <laughs> I, I'm, like, I'm like 95% sure he would like just ask me for he sent assassins. That I can tell you that it's the other side for me. I don't my father think, would I don't definitely think send it. assassins to get oh, me. Oh, your, yeah, your father maybe. Yeah. I don't think my father would. Yeah, I don't think uh, so. Well, speaking of the other person who had assassins sent after them, uh, Jailing, uh, the sister. Um, That's such a, bad. a badass. And I, I watched one of those like behind the scenes features they have on Disney Plus. Shout out to Disney Plus. And she's such a little, little goofball of an of an of a person in real life. And she's like yeah. this Aww. little deadly assassin. Um right, it turns off the second they say action. I was impressed yeah. with that. Amazing. Uh my favorite bit with her is like when they're in uh Tello and uh they're like training for the big battle, no one's teaching her anything. She's just swinging her little mace thing just like, around. Just like in her past, her whole yeah. life she's been self-made. <laughs> yeah. Like no one's gonna give this and just throw her something, a lunch, no. something. Can someone sit down with her? <laughs> <laughs> well, I took it as like she's like no one I took it as like she showed up and they're like, Oh, you're fine. <laughs> we don't need to teach you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because she ran this underground fighting ring with betting. Uh which, oh, I meant to look this up beforehand because her like her right man, right hand man, I cannot remember what he was in, and it's driving me crazy. I meant to look it up the other day. Uh, Come back, Ronnie Chung Chang. Yeah, he's a stand up too, right? Yeah, he's a stand up. He was in Crazy oh. Rich Asians. Um, he played one of the cousins. Yeah. 
that's it. I'll come back. Okay, we'll come back. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, how did um, the, so uh, the second post credit scene we saw that she is now leading the Ten Rings? Are we? Uh, what do we think? Uh, let's. Of course, good, good for her. Get get your yeah, bag. Get your bag. Get good your bag. for you. But is she? Uh, will she do crime with this bag, or is she? <laughs> oh, hundred. Do mm. crimes. Yeah. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I will. Okay. Here we go, everybody. I'm going to say this. I would love to see Jai Ling team up with Falcon and the Winter Soldier's power broker, uh, played by, oh my God, Emily Van Camp, uh, the, the the blonde woman. Uh, I think I'd love to see They're that. They're in the same part of the world, right? They're literally in the same place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the cinematic universe. So, I don't know, a couple of ladies doing some destruction on the American government. I'm here for yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, if we can have Falcon and the Winter Soldier, we, if we can have that buddy cop comedy, let's have like the duo crime lord female show. I would watch that that, that episode series definitely. Oh. Since Disney Plus is 100% listening, let me get that show. Yeah, I want to see that show. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I there's something I'm thinking about uh, for the future. You know, Disney Plus. If you want me to just let me know. Um, let's see other people in this family. Um, the t- the Talo game. Oh, something's happening. He's on Doogie Camelo. Camelo. Oh, uh, he is on Doogie oh, Camelo Loha. That's what it was. <laughs> the new I'm Doogie Hauser. I was like the other Doogie Hauser. Yeah, it's really good. I could remember. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was digging deep. I was like, where am I no, seeing it's him? Perfect. That's another Disney <laughs> Plus show because <laughs> yeah. we are. <laughs> Sponsored by Disney. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I would like a free subscription. If you're uh-huh. <laughs> no. Yeah, I just want stuff. I already paid for my subscription. I just want stuff, man. <laughs> uh, absolutely stuff. So, any thoughts also on the stuff. Tallow crew or Sir Ben Kingsley's uh, triumphant return to the MCU? Oh my goodness, that was insane. That was so insane to see him play that that <laughs> crappy actor. That was so great. How stupid he was. I loved- that and I loved his relationship with uh with Murray the oh, the uh, no Morris. face <laughs> Morris. Morris yes the the no face uh, furry flying God. thing what a cute creature but so give it a face it's so late it's, it, he looks looks like an <laughs> ottoman with wings no those are legit like those are all legit things. from that culture though is it the, the, you yeah you can really find those. You can find like hmm. like the big lion. Think about think about like some Chinese restaurants you've been at with those big. Yeah. Oh yeah, I've seen the lions. Yeah, um, yeah, that, those things. I've never seen the, the headless furry. wings. Yeah, they're there. They're 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 in they're in some culture. Okay. They're they're a cultural reference. So someone did their homework and thought those were hilarious. Okay, I I like calling it headless. I, that helps me a little bit because I'm. <laughs> I was like, you could put a face I just on saw there. A furry it still, butt still had a voice. Yeah. Somehow there was a voice coming out of it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They had a voice box. <laughs> Somewhere yeah. in there. Somewhere. Full, full Chewie and Han Solo relationship with uh, Sir Ben Kingsbury. Yeah. Yes. And I want to point this out. So my roommate actually pointed this out to me um, that it's kind of funny that Ben Kingsley, you know, played this actor who portrayed the Mandarin, which is, you know, normally an Asian character. And Sir Ben Kingsley is very white presenting. And it is reminiscent of, uh, did we, we all know Ben Kingsley, he played Gandhi in a movie? And won an yes. Oscar yeah. for Gandhi. Yeah. And so it's kind of this double meeting where he's apologizing for doing that in the MCU, but it kind of serves yeah. as like an apology uh-huh. for doing that in real life. Oh, it's, he, I he felt that too. His life. Yeah. Like we retcon yeah. story bits to help movies out, but he's actually retconning an actual part of his life. Like, hey man, this is who I was when I did that. This is who this character is when they when they did this very similar thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I want to give a shout out to Iron Man 3. I think it's one of the best Iron Man movies. I know I'm alone. But you are alone. I would rather yikes t- tell you. I would rather watch Act Three of Iron Man Three than Act Three of Iron Man One. And there you go. Oh. How about this? Give me Act One of Iron Man One. Give me Act Two of Civil War, and then Act Three of Iron Man Three, and that's the best Iron Man movie. Oh, oh no. <laughs> mm. oh. Okay, so we're not going to think about it. Can I leave now? <laughs> I I am thinking about it. I'm, I'm horrified. I just. It means we never get the I am Iron Man in your version. We never get Tony's improv. I am Iron Man. You get, you that, in, get, you get that. that in Endgame. That's still an Endgame. <laughs> it's not a callback anymore, but he says it. <laughs> it's the first time he ever says it years <laughs> later. He's like, after all these years. Like, Why have I never thought of I this am before? Iron Man. <laughs> I don't know. By the way, I'm Iron Man. Nice to meet you. I know I usually walk around without the helmet on, but I'm Iron but... I don't know. I love Iron Man 3. It's a Christmas movie for me. Um, 
Oh, yeah. cool. That's fair. You know, this is me being vulnerable and opening up, and I'm glad that it's uh, being so negatively received. We, we didn't need it today, but thank you. <laughs> the audacity <laughs> to come on my podcast. <laughs> Look, you, would need you got my name wrong for nine years. So, uh, right today, when I'm being I recorded. I still, I'm still calling you Damien all the time now. That's different, though. I never said it to your face. It's just the thought I had. Mo, I had a hard time. You, you, the hyphen, it's they're similar names. I'm going to defend Damien here because, <laughs> like, I didn't know if it was Philip Spots, Spots. Phillip, there's a lot of things going on there. It's alphabetical. <laughs> to who? And it's in all of my emails. And social media. I know, but just it is everywhere. It is literally out loud. everywhere. You don't say it. So people don't see. You don't say it out loud. So since you don't say it, it just it comes at you, and then you start to feel like you're on the spot with it. Yeah, it's a, it's a perfect agree. version of you for me. It's the, your name is introverted, just like you. your name is like it's out there and it wants the attention, but then really it, it it takes a little while to get to know it and approach it. I've got to pull the reins back. Can on I the, go no, now? no, we're almost done. Um, <laughs> later, you've been wanting to leave since you got here wild this is the best part of your day i'm so sure um this uh is the time where we do a little connection to dr strange we uh what did we see we saw wong doing battle with the abominable the abomination which is a character we met in the incredible hulk edward norton movie edward norton and incredible hulk that was insane yeah wild to reference that movie i'm like okay cool um i think uh, this is something that I know now after watching Spider-Man Far, uh, No Way Home that Wong is now the source for Supreme because Doctor Strange was gone for those five years. Mm-hmm. So I guess... Promotion. Promotion. Uh, and then we see Wong collect Katie and uh, Shang-Chi, has a little meeting with Bruce Banner and Captain Marvel, and then they sing Hotel California at a karaoke bar, uh, which is really, that was literally fun. my least favorite thing to do in the world. Um <laughs> Just that song or karaoke in general? Oh, karaoke. I love that song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I don't, I, I, I feel as an actor slash improviser, I have other ways of getting out my feelings. I didn't need an explanation. I just said, okay. <laughs> well, we can well, I was up. mostly okay. talking to Jordan. Um, so oh, okay. <laughs> so that's your Doctor Strange connection. Do with it as you will. We are moving on to our final segment uh, and our favorite segment of this week and every week. It's the classic Fuck, Mary Kill. And Ooh. on the docket today is the titular star himself, Shang Chi, and you better believe all his rings are included. Aquafina is on the deck as well. And finally, our third one is Ji Ling, uh, the sister extraordinaire, leader of the modern day Ten Rings. She will hire a female ninja assassin for you in a heartbeat. Um, I can go first if you guys need some time to think this through. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, lot. I am also uh, ready. I'd rather put yeah. you in the sandwich. You should be in the. You should be in between the Mo and Law sandwich. Probably oh, is my yeah. guess. I'll, I'll be the top part of this cookie here. Okay, top part. Let's go to our expert, Law uh, Torello. What? What is? What are your choices? Well, ever since Kim's convenience, Simu Liu's been been on my F list. You gotta. I gotta. You gotta take him to bed and let him do all the things to you that he has oh strength. <laughs> Look. Oh man, he could make you feel. He would make me feel. Oh, so like a woman. You know what I mean? I feel like no. you can do things. To me. I'm telling you. Yes. You know, yeah. listen, I'll say this. I'm a bigger guy. And so like I've, I've dated different shapes, size of people. And it's always nice when someone makes you feel a little smaller. Yeah, and that's what I, yeah. That's I agree. Me. Use that word. I agree. Yeah. So that's what I want. I want yeah. him to do that for me. Um, I definitely wanted to uh, murder Aquafina the, the second that she got on screen. Um, I mean, that character needs to die. I, 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 I when she fell off the building, the draft, I was like, oh, it would be one of those. See, that's a good when when someone has to die in that way. You know, I know we have it as murder in this case, but you know, there would be a lot of emotion with it. I'm like, let's kill her so that like yeah, yeah. people grow from that death. Mm-hmm. And I always it would motivate him further to like do other yeah. things. Yeah. And mm-hmm. as far as personal desires to be a kept man, you know that if you're the if you're the husband of a crime lord. What do I have to worry about? I could have a, probably a PlayStation 5 by now. I would have had my own, you know, set up. Probably all the drugs you could possibly want. Probably. And then no debt. what a great time. So, man, I can't think of a better person to be married to. Mm. And G-Link. And then you get the in-law um, situation happening, too, where you, at the holidays, you know, Shang-Chi comes over. You get to flirt with him a little bit. But, you know, leave it light. I mean, I don't know if you want to step oh. out on your uh, crime lord boss wife. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's her <laughs> brother. He's not going to say anything. That's true. All right. Well, uh, law is preparing for adultery. Um, you heard it here first. Uh, for my choices um, in this sandwich, I, uh, you know, I'm also going to kill Aquafina, but only because I don't want to compete for who's funnier in the relationship. So, uh, <laughs> He has to die. Has to right. die. That makes sense. Like, uh, you've been in too many comedy movies. No, no, no. I'm still on my way up. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're yeah. the same, Damon, but go ahead. Yeah. I think uh, for my fuck, uh, no one's going to enjoy it. But uh, Zhai Ling, the sister, I will uh, have a terrible time. I don't know what to do with that situation. She probably wouldn't know what to do with me. I'm going to, she's going to leave disappointed and I'm going to leave probably with. That's cute though. That's like a teenager thing you guys would be having. Yeah. Like a first, a first for everybody yeah, in our thirties, but yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> and then my husband, Simu Lu, Shang-Chi, Sean, whatever you want to call him, just make sure he has my number. I want to marry that man. I will take care of him. I will give him anything he wants. Uh, just oh God, just let it happen. You got ten rings. Got- I mean, he only he only has to give you one. And you, that's it. <laughs> and then you're all set. Yeah, he's got ten rings. I I'm was looking for one. <laughs> yeah, and you did make the you made the Sean reference just now, and I just wanted to throw in that was my favorite joke in the whole movie. Mm-hmm. That that when she looks at him, she's like, "You changed your name from Sean to Sean." Yeah, like, and, and you, you were surprised you got found. Like, what did you do there? So was, dumb. Uh, well done. Mwah. All right, uh, newbie. Mo Phillips spots. What are your selections? I'm not calling you that. Um, so I think I would also kill Aquafina. Uh, though I did enjoy her in the film. That just not gotta go. Uh, yeah, something, something's gotta go, and it's not doing anything for me. Uh, I would fuck Jiling. Uh, uh, I'm saying that right? Uh, because I think she would honestly turn me out. I think like. <laughs> to be like an acrobatic <laughs> yes <laughs> extensive like, she have like a dominating of toys. she's got like a uh-huh. yeah yeah she's got like whip she's got chains i'm not saying from this across to my parents. the room you um, can do it from across the room with some of that stuff <laughs> she's got like swings uh handcuffs oh, like man. just paddles mm-hmm. it, it would be a wild night that i would never paddles. forget and oh, then God. i think i i'm i'm not don't kink shame us um and then i <laughs> Uh, Shang Chi. That's who I would marry. I feel like again for the same reason that Law would like uh, him to turn him out. Uh, I would like. I feel like he like be great at the big spoon. Mm-hmm. You know, mm. would bring me soup in bed. We'd cuddle and like bake cookies on the weekends. I just kind of get that like that vibe from him. You know, he's like, oh, I filled your gas up with car, and I'm like, thanks, babe. Makes sense. Both in the guys so that sweet. can't provide for her. So that's that's this. This is a continuation. Of that situation, he doesn't have a job. He's got very. He's going to be running off to be a superhero all the time. He's going to constantly be leaving you sad and alone. This is the kind of relationships that I'm trying to steer you clear of, but apparently I've had no influence. No, I like that he never be home. That works for me. Please go do some other things. Do not be in my space. I did not think we we'd end here. Uh, (laughs) Didn't know this is where we would land. Um, Love it. And hey, Mo, we agreed on that. How about that? Yeah. How about yeah. that? It's like we've been friends for eight or nine years Who now. Who can say? <laughs> and I can say your name. <laughs> yeah. So. And you're Mo. Short for Morgan. Um, Amy and Ruth, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my goodness. Wow. All right. Yeah. Y'all, that is, uh, th- that brings us to the end of our podcast. La, 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 la. Where, where, where can people find you? And is there anything you want to promote for yourself? Uh, sure, I'll be the first to say it. You can definitely listen to a crazy podcast called The Faculty Lounge with Mo and Law featuring that amazing other person that's been on this podcast. It is the official podcast of the Second City Training Center where we get a chance to introduce the world to our fellow faculty members because we teach comedy and acting and storytelling and writing. And Damon is one of those amazing people. And if you backlog and go check out our episodes, you'll hear the very first one of The Faculty Lounge with Mo and Law and Damon was featured on that. So we appreciate that. And I can be found on Instagram at improv. Prob Law, one word, I-M-P-R-O-B-L-A-W. Thank you very much. Yes, it, it was such a fun podcast. Thank you for having me. I was so honored that you, could be, you guys made me episode one. And to return the favor, I will make you guys episode three. Um, so- <laughs> <laughs> I like the number. It's okay. I don't think it. <laughs> but uh, it's such a fun podcast. And I, I'm like mad. No one, like, why, why hasn't anyone thought of this before? It's such a great idea. So go check it out. Uh, Mo, uh, any uh, socials or things to promote for you? 
Yeah, uh, you can find me on Instagram at Mo Prov Chai. So M O P R O V T H I. I can spell. It's amazing. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Um, thank you both so much. Uh, I'm Damon Royster. You can find me on Instagram at Damon Royster, D A Y M A N R O Y S T E R. I'm also on Twitter at Damon Royster 88. So the same thing, but just with an 88 at the end. Um, that's our show. And thank you very much to our producer, uh, Jordan Powell. Uh, Jordan, what grade would you give this episode? Uh, B minus, I'd say, you know. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Oh, Jordan. I, yeah, I and I agree with the whole the Philip Scott spot. See, I just did it accidentally <laughs> because the reason why is because it's Phillips with a P, and then uh-huh. you don't want to follow it right back with that's, another that's... P. Don't act like I did this to myself. <laughs> this was my parents. I didn't do this. So if you have a complaint, you can talk to Michael and Wendy. Thank you. I, no, it was great, guys. It was. Great. Thank you. But honestly, so many things that just happened. I love creating drama, and Jordan, that is a great grade for me because I can always do better. Um, great. God, remember when he gave me a B minus? Anyway, this is Podcast Six One Six, a production of Press Play Podcasts. Uh, please rate and subscribe. Download us. Tell your friends. We're fun. I promise. Um, we'll be back uh, next week with more uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe content. And until that time, please remember that with great power comes great responsibility. Thank you.